Hello Interwebs, welcome to Board Repair Basics. So in this episode, we are going to look at what happens when you disable a couple of critical power rails. So what I've done is I've sabotaged the board. Um, I've done two very simple sabotages on it, which have completely disabled the board. So we are now replicating a total stone dead, no power situation. And these symptoms are actually extremely common in the event of liquid damage, for example, because the critical rails that, I've that I have disabled are actually in places that are the first to get hit by liquid damage. So it is quite common to see a laptop that is stone dead, but actually has a very simple fault that completely kills the whole laptop. So now what we're going to do is we're going to diagnose this board and we're going to find out what I've done to it. Now, we're kind of going to sort of home in on the problem fairly quickly because I know what's wrong with it. However, you know, try and suspend your disbelief here. We're going to go through it in a logical process. So, firstly, let's take a look at the board. So, uh, first of all, uh, pretend we've got a built laptop for a moment. We've plugged the laptop in. We have a MagSafe uh, we have a MagSafe charger connected and we have no green light on the charger. There is no green light and when we press the power button on the laptop, nothing happens. There's no lights, there's no fans, there's no sound, there's nothing. So the laptop is stone dead, no green light. It looks like it's a goner. So where do we begin dealing with this situation? Well, in the previous videos, we've gone over the importance of critical power rails and the two of them that we mentioned there were PP3V42 and PP bus G3 hot. And I demonstrated why those two power rails are so important. So let's start with PP bus G3 hot because you know that was that was required for everything, right? You know, that was the one that powered everything on the system. Let's see if PP bus G3 hot is present. So let's switch over to our board view and find somewhere where we can measure PP bus G3 hot, preferably on this side of the board, so I don't have to turn it over again. So we're going to switch to our board view. Okay, so now we're going to find somewhere where we can measure PP bus G3 hot. Um, so let's do a search. So I'm going to search for PP bus underscore G3 hot. And let's select that. Enter. Okay. So two nice obvious places to check it from will be these guys here. Uh, these are two fairly large capacitors. Both of them have PP bus G3 hot on one side and they go to ground on the other, so they're nice and easy. Let's check those out. So that's C7330 and 7331. So if we switch back to the board, we can see those two guys here and here. Nice big caps, those are on PP bus G3 hot. Let's see if there's any power there. So I'm gonna set my multimeter to DC voltage mode. We're gonna put one probe on ground and we're going to poke our red probe on the anode side of the capacitors. And we know this is the anode side because that's where it's labeled on the board view. And in addition to that, um, these cylindrical capacitors, their cathode, the negative, is denoted by the stripe. So let's go on the anode side. So one side, and there's nothing there. There's no one at home. And let's just check the other one as well and there's no one there either. So PP bus G3 hot is missing entirely. What about PP3 V42, the other mission critical rail? Do we have that one at all? Let's find a measure point for that. Okay, so let's find somewhere where we can measure PP3 V42. So we're gonna find PP3 V42 underscore G3 hot. All right, so there's loads of places this pops up on both sides of the board. Uh, we've got a nice little fella down here, got a little capacitor in this little cluster, that goes to ground, that's a nice test point, capacitors are nice easy test points, so let's check him out, so he's right in the bottom left of the board in a little cluster of six, let's switch back to the, so we switch back to the camera and we'll find him, he's down here, so once again I'm going to stick my black probe on ground, any screw hole, and we're going to check that capacitor. So PP3V42 is also gone. So no wonder our system doesn't work. Now PP3V42 being missing tells us two things. 
One, it's most likely why PPBus G3 Hot is down. Because remember when we were looking at that in a previous episode, PPBus G3 Hot has an inrush limiter. And one of those inrush limiters uh, measures current and it compares it versus PP3V42. So if PP3V42 is missing, then PPBus G3 Hot won't come up either. And we also need PP3V42 in order to switch on the SMC. Um, so PP3V42 being missing is more important here than PPBus G3 Hot being missing. The other thing that we want to note is that PP3V42 is also required to get a green light on the charger. So let's find out why PP3V42 is not online. Let's find the source of that and check if there's power coming out of it. So we're going to head back to our schematics and we're going to search for PP3V42 and I'm going to search for somewhere where it's an output. Oh, there it is, it's right here. So here we go. So PP3V42 G3 hot supply. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. Right, so this circuit here, um, because 3.42 volts isn't a lot of power, we don't need a full-blown buck converter here. We can actually do it internally in a single chip. So this has an input supply, and then the chip itself uh, gives us our output voltage. We still run it through a coil, and we've still got a couple of capacitors just to keep everything on the straight and level, but we don't need the buck converter circuit for this. Uh, it's overkill, so we can do it all in the chip. So that is why we don't have that familiar pattern of the two transistors here. Um, but we do have the coil and the capacitors. So this fella here, because this is an independent power supply, it gets its power from two different locations. We've got two inputs in the top left here. We have PP18V5 DC in con, that's our charger, so our MagSafe charger. And we also have battery POS F, I think that is. Uh, so that is the input from the battery. So both of these inputs come in and they go into this dual diode package, which ensure that the two inputs can't cross wires with each other because you don't want to wire the uh, MagSafe charger directly to your battery and vice versa. You're going to have a bad time. So there's a dual diode package and because it's all in a square, that tells us that this is a single unit. Then that goes in to the U6990, which handles power to PP3V42 G3 hot on the output. So we can measure that from L6995. So let's find L6995 on the board. So we're going to search again. I'm going to go L6995. Bam! Where are you? You're sideways. Oh, that's going to be right under the heatsink, isn't it? Are you going to make me take up the heatsink off? Oh, I think we're okay. So we've got our two main chips here and here. And then the coil that we want is this guy here because he's diagonal. He's got a pin up in the top left and in the bottom right. So let's get a measurement on that and see if there's any power there. So we can measure any side of this because it's a coil and it's not polarized. And there's no power there. So there's no power coming out of the PP3V42 power supply, which is why it's missing. Is there any power going into it, I wonder? So let's track the circuit back a bit further. So if we move back, we go back into the chip, let's go all the way back to here. Let's go back to um, the diode, and then also we have a resistor back here as well. So let's find these guys. D6905, where are you? D6905. So D6905, that's directly above it. So we should have power coming in out of pins 5 and 4. And then there will be power going into this package from pin 1, which is PPDC in there. So we want power coming in there and power coming out from here and here. We're not going to see any power from pin 3 because we've got no battery connected. So we're looking for 1, 5 and 4, so the corners basically. Let's see what's going on up in there. So we've got our ground, and we're going to go for corners. So top right, no one at home there. So there's nothing coming out of it. Is there anything going into it? 
No, there's nothing going into it. So this is starting to get a bit weird now. There's one last place we can check. Let's head back to the schematics. So moving further back again, we've got R6905. So that's the last cutoff point where we can find on this area. So let's check it. So board view. Let's go to there. So I can just follow this backwards because pin one is going to connect to uh, R6905. So if I click on pin one, we can see that it goes straight through to this via. So I'm gonna flip the board over. And on the other side of the board, let's just zoom out. So as you can see, we flip the board over. And on the other side of the board, we have R6905. And then that goes back to our DC in jack. So let's flip our board over and see what we find. So for reference, we're looking along the bottom side of the board um, and that's quite a big resistor. So we're looking for um, two larger packages around it with a large one above it and then it's directly down in that line. And so halfway along the bottom of the board, down from the larger package, there is our resistor. And here is our fake liquid damage. So what I've done is I've knocked this resistor sideways, breaking the connection on it. So let's do some measurements here. So once again, we're going to go black probe to ground. And on the input side of the capacitor, we have 16 volts coming from the charger, 16.5. And on the output side of it, we have minus voltage, weirdly enough. That will probably be because something's trying to suck power. However, either way, minus voltage is not what we want. So let's straighten this resistor up and get PP3V42 back online. Okay, let's heat this guy up and get him straight again. So we're moving in with the hot air. I've got my hot air station to 420 on my station, which is a cheap station. I've got my airflow turned down a bit because we don't want to blow everything away. And we're just going to warm the area back up again. Now, I'm currently working dry here. Realistically, I should be using uh, flux just to make everything flow a bit nicer. Um, and if this was a repair board, I would definitely be swathing everything in flux. But because I'm trying to hide my work here, we're keeping everything a bit dry. So, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Okay. Let's move in and get the heat in. This guy doesn't want to flow because there's no flux. There we go. Okay, so how are we doing? Do we have power back? Huh, we don't. We still have no green light on the charger. What about PP3V42? Is he back now? He should be. So we're gonna check him out. So we're going to go one probe to ground and we're gonna check that coil again. Whoop. Let's get a better contact. There we go. There he is. 3.42 volts. So, PP3V42 is back online, but for some reason or other, we still don't have a green light. So, what about PPVOS G3 Hot? Is he back? Let's look for him. So, we're going to go probe to ground, and we're going to check those big caps again. There he is. There's PPVOS G3 Hot at 12.6 volts. However, we're still lacking a green light on our charger. So in the next episode, we're going to investigate why the green light on the charger is missing and how we can restore it. For now, we've seen clearly how disabling PP3V42 with a failed component such as the input resistor or something along those lines can completely disable the board. Please leave your questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye for now.